Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the next in our series of devotions based on the servant songs in the prophet Isaiah. And today we're going to start looking at the second of the songs, which we find in Isaiah chapter 49. And I'm going to read just the first four verses. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword, in the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow, in his quiver he hid me away. He said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I've laboured in vain, I've spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. Well, I wonder if you ever feel despondent, if you ever feel like giving up, that the struggle is too great. I wonder what keeps you going, what sustains you. Well, that's an issue faced by the servant, whom we know is Jesus. And in this second song, he feels the the weight, the enormity of the task. But quickly, he gets his focus back upon the Lord. Whilst the first servant song was God speaking over his servant, here it's the servant who speaks. And he talks about three things. He talks about his call and commission. That's in the first four verses that we've read. Um, His doubts and misgivings, it's in verse four. And then finally is preparation and commission. So we'll begin by looking at the first of those, his call and commission. And again, we can split this down into three parts. He talks about his personality, his power and his proclamation. Now, who's the servant speaking to? Well, he's addressing the coastlands and the distant islands. These are the nations surrounding Israel, whose gods have proved to be worthless. If you look at chapter 44 of Isaiah, you'll see in uh, amusing but very starkly, the prophet exposes the futility of worshipping the gods of wood and iron. By contrast, the living God chooses and empowers his servant. And I think that says something to us about speaking to the idols of our own age, because we too have the gods that we worship. And as Christians, we have something to say about that and how the living God is to be heard and obeyed. So firstly, in this section on his call and commission, the servant talks about his personality or his personhood. And what he says is that he's been called by God even before he was born. While he was still in the womb, God called him for the task. And that's true of other servants of God that we meet in Scripture. You remember that Jeremiah says something very similar about his own commissioning. And even Paul in Galatians talks about the fact that he was chosen from his birth to be used by God. And the wonderful thing is, it's true for us. In Ephesians, we read these amazing words that God has chosen us before the world was formed to be holy and blameless in his sight. And I think that has a couple of implications for us. First of all, it means that nothing in our lives is wasted. Whatever experiences we go through, whatever troubles and challenges we face. If you think of Paul, all those years training as a rabbi, being an expert in the Jewish law, proved so important when he became a Christian and was able to show to his fellow countrymen that Jesus was the fulfillment of all of those promises. But also it means that God is at work in us, 
shaping us, molding us, our personalities, our personhood. As Graham Kendrick says in his song, God is at work in us, his purpose to perform. Now tomorrow we'll go on to look at the next part of this second servant song, but today I pray that God would bless you in your ministry and that you know that deep assurance that you've been called, chosen and commissioned by him.